Hello everybody, my name is VTech Guy. We're here with DC of the Zam Cham. What's up? K Molds Incorporated. And one of the what's only, up? Brian King. No, what's up? Boo. Boo, what a heel. Too sour, that guy. Anyways. Too sour. <laughs> too sour. Poor Franklin doesn't know because he hasn't watched freaking. Uh, total non-stop deletion yet but total non-stop deletion has occurred Actually, have. you have yeah, he did watch it what were your thoughts yeah, real quick watched. just keep it like under like two minutes uh i thought it was a hell of a show mm -hmm. definitely a lot of uh dramatization it was campy but it worked kind of has that like 90s tv show feel yeah uh, i can feel it i can feel it apocalypto yeah. is one of the best things ever mm -hmm. without a doubt so so many great jokes that needs to be an every year thing. This needs to be an every year thing. I, I'm the jokes itself. Give it a ten out of ten. So I guess we're gonna call this the uh, a year in review of TNA uh, TNA rewards giving out some rewards. I guess fantasy rewards in the air somewhere. Um, for you know OMG moments. Uh, the top tag team, uh, most improved wrestler, um, controversies, stuff of that matter. And um, I, for all intents and purposes, this was the pop era. Because uh, if you think about it, um, TNA didn't they, started. Didn't they start pop either late 2015 or early 2016? No, January the 5th. The first broadcast was January of 2016. Yep. Oh, then perfect. January perfect. 5th of 2016. So at the beginning of the year, so when they started pop, and they're still on pop, but they're also doing Fight Network, which is. Um, no offense, my preferred method uh, of watching the it. commercials for 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 life. Yeah, keep it too sour. I but, guess you can say the pop TV year has been uh, popping off. Yep. Uh, this year we saw the uh, release of Billy Corgan, um, which is probably the biggest blow to the company. Uh, we have another Hall of, Hall of Fame inductee, of course. That would be the one, and the only, the marvelous Gail Kim. So I think we saw two TNA TNA longtime mainstays leave the company mm -hmm. to head up. I guess you would say, would you say down south with NXT, or would you say up north just because WWE in general? As, and Bobby Roode, uh, I'd Eric say Young. down south. Well, they're well, already down, down south, south though. They're... Bobby Roode and Eric Young. Anyway, Bobby Roode, Eric Young. They went well, next Bobby door. in Canada, so they went next and door. And James Storm for a bit. Yeah, but James Storm came back. You know, we would see James Storm uh, return. Well, not really return. Leave, return, and um, kind of leave, and then rebrand re himself. So, yes. Um, that's definitely a big thumbs up there. But uh, I guess we'll go into, uh, I guess we'll start off like a little round robin uh, debate real quick. Uh, who do you think wrestler of the year? I know it's a big question right off the get go, but we got to start off big. Uh, who do you think's had a hell of a year? In your opinion, if you could argue one person uh, in particular, if I had to pick one person for as in like up and coming, uh, the entire year who's had a great year for uh, oh, TNA, easily one word broke. Well, one word or two words broken mat, <laughs> three, uh, yeah. four, uh, yeah, one yeah, word. So, like I said, mine's, mine's it has been to be broken mat. Night, my mind yeah, got you guys just shined all year, whether he was coming up as that baby face rivalry, I have to get the oh, title yes. back. To Yes, Whether he's yes. Big money, Matt. Especially because his money family, there, his going. family was there, right? Like his his father, right? Yeah, and you know that was kind of towards the end of last year. But even this year, when he won the world title back, it was a big moment. Like uh -huh. you could feel that title chase was important to TNA's history. Uh, big money, Matt was an amazing heel gimmick. I, it's very underrated, mm -hmm. and I think that's what really brought Matt to the forefront. And he was getting kind of popular until he switched into this broken Matt thing. And then he just exploded. Uh -huh. He became TNA. There is no TNA now without Broken Matt. I'm definitely agree with you on that one. The, the rest of the year. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with you on that one, uh, especially from the standpoint that he uh, did something that's really hard to do, and that's go from a point of being the uh, the ace of the company, the the figurehead, the all two guy, the John Cena of TNA, uh, was Broken Matt Hardy. And, you know, he didn't need that title to be relevant. Uh, by God, the man is holding the tag titles, making the tag titles 
by God, I think those TNA tag titles are probably more over than more world titles of a lot of companies. That's, yeah, that, that those are probably the... Mm -hmm. It's definitely They're, more over than the Universal title. It's in the yeah. top four titles probably in the world today is because of who holds it right now. And I think it's it's like of that sad thing because he is a tag team champion, so it kind of devalues the world championship a little bit because the, the world champion is clearly not as important now that he is, uh, you know, of this. Yeah, no slight to Eddie Edwards, but this is the broken Matt and brother Nero. So he is, a, he is above. Uh, it's kind of like with John Cena doing SNL stuff. Like, he is above his own company now, you know, and so there's only... Sadly, you know, maybe one more place for him to go until he becomes over that company and gets his own show or something Let, crazy. But let's start with a little bit of dirt. Let's bring up a little bit of dirt because Matt uh -huh. came out with an interview. I want to say yesterday or the day before, mm -hmm. where he spoke of getting like getting his way in TNA and renegotiating his contract. Do you think he's going to invest in ownership in the company and kind of just say, "Hey, this is my show now, and I'm going to run it how I please"? Uh, there's big rumors that he's head creative right now. So that that would that would be huge for TNA. Mm -hmm. That that that's the change. Like that that's where TNA and, like on the, with the feeder this. system. He could use Omega as a feeder system, and since it's his promotion, he can use it for free. And we all know. I mean, Tech, you and I know how great North Carolina Indies are. Oh, well, yes. we saw that tonight. <laughs> yeah, we did see that tonight. Oh yes. Um, also, quick, quick thing to remember is that we spent the better half of this year. Um, TNA was not on Thursday nights. TNA was on uh, what was it? Tuesdays and, Tuesday. and Wednesdays. It was it on Tuesdays it, and Wednesdays. It was on Wednesdays, and then it went to Tuesdays, and then SmackDown was. Then the SmackDown Tuesday. came around. And then yeah. they said, "You know what? We're going to go to Thursdays." Yeah, I can't really remember why they they made the jump from. You know, doing Wednesdays back to Tuesdays, and then you know SmackDown came around for Thursdays. But I can't remember why they jumped to Wednesdays in the first place. Um, I can't remember it, but I remember they spent most I don't of the know. year. You know, Wasn't it SmackDown going on Thursdays? Uh, yes. So that might have been why they went to Wednesdays. So I could see that there, but um. You know, and T then they just said, you know what, we're going to go to Thursday. Yeah, TNA spent most of the year, though, um, on Thursdays. So they kind of flip-flopped a little bit with uh, Tuesday and Wednesdays and whatnot. But um, it's good to see them back on Thursdays. I think TNA deserves to stay on Thursdays. Uh, and WWE has their own like first three days of the week, if you think about it, with uh, Raw, SmackDown, 205 Live, NXT, all your freaking wrestling overdose you know, in the first couple of days, and then out comes the broken universe. So... Um, let's go into this now. Who do you think, without a doubt, is, and we'll probably have different opinions here, as, uh, the rising superstar of the year, the guy who's transformed the most? Um, because for me, there's, there's two guys that are really on this one, but at the same time, I have to, I have to, like, really evaluate, uh, their levels here. Um, but I'll let you guys shoot first, so. In terms of rising guys who just transformed and changed their perception i gotta say there's two big ones in terms of the x division it was djc he was kind of like a comedy gimmick. he was a big heel for a while he was That's a huge one guy heel. i had on there he's a huge heel when aries won when aries dropped the title he was supposed to be the top heel of the division and they kind of like flaked a little bit with him i'd rather have him as a face the top baby face yeah he is like really he's really um I think in the, like really pleasing to the viewership in terms of like what a champion and would look like for that division. No, that's the WWE, but I think he's what they wanted TJ Perkins to be. Oh yes, and I think that's the sad thing because, um, by God, I love TJ Perkins under a mask. But then once you take the mask away, I kind of feel like it's, what is WWE gonna do? Oh, let's put a sad story on him. So. Yeah, and I mean, Rich, he just, he just doesn't have the rock charisma that Swan has. Meanwhile, well, I think DJ's a pretty good talker. Another, that's another debate for another day. But um, uh, I who think, else are you thinking? I think DJ's he's a pretty good talker. And my other guy <laughs> definitely, and, and you guys know how much I feel for this guy, Eddie Edwards. Yep, you got it, my two yeah. right there. DJ's me, I, Eddie I Edwards. think me and, you, me and you had a conversation about Eddie Edwards earlier today. I think he is so good in the ring, and 
he has gotten really good at playing a compelling baby face. It's a I rough think. debate. It's a rough debate between who's um who's had a better. He's blossomed year. as a, he's blossomed like he because he was always a pretty good singles guy and like Ring of Honor and all those smaller things. Yeah, he's blossomed into a singles big time guy with Davey being out. I still he, remember the first time he, he we saw the, the ball Wolves. And ran with it. Do you guys remember the first time we saw the Wolves? I mean, it's with been MVP. a way back. Yeah, it's been with like MVP. way back. Everybody but... thought Davey was going to be the one to get this. Yes, everybody did. Well, think Davey, Davey was the one who got hurt instead. Yep. And so Eddie, Eddie was the one to Eddie get capitalized that. big time. Yep. And is it me or is it every time he wins a title, he gets a little bit better on the mic? I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I think every time he's he's still not um, phenomenal to say. The every least, time they give him the a little bit of like, hey, you but know what, you're, you're going to get a little he bit of spotlight. Yes, he, he can definitely hang. Um, Which I think him not being the best talker kind of fits for him as a babyface. It Which, helps build up that underdog mentality. It's weird because the main eventers for TNA, um, they kind of flip flop on if they want to have a good talker or if they want to have a good wrestler. And I think that's the thing. You know, we spent, um, you know, some of the year where it was uh, what early was EC3, right? Yeah, you yeah. Had so we had, we had a great talker and a great wrestler, but at the same time, I don't think I don't think people really appreciated EC3's wrestling as they did his charisma. Whereas Lashley, he had that uh, very had, like, Drew Galloway. Brock Lesnar-ish reign of. You know, he didn't need to talk, but he just needed to wrestle and beat you up. Um, and now we but have I, another. The thing about you know, Lashley is that eventually he became this imposing character. Yes. That was kind of right about everything he said. Yes, I think that that's that's the thing that we really need um, in a wrestling company is someone who will say things and get it done, um, and not really have to worry too much about falling back and making an excuse to make a roundabout of where he needs to go next um he just says it and does it um honestly i can say that i don't think tna has had a bad world champion this year at all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. most definitely no I mean, filler, cha- champ- no filler yeah. champs have happened in tna this year well actually we can't say that because oh. now we're gonna segue knockouts we have had, uh, you know, a filler champion who is Allie, who is that transitional champion because they wanted Sienna to drop the belt, uh, but they wanted her to drop it out to um, Maria. Yeah. However, <laughs> however, Sienna dropped the belt to Allie to then drop the belt to Maria for Maria to then drop the belt to Gail Kim because around comes her... A Hall of Fame induction, and it would mean more for Gail Kim to have that induction, big feud also, get the title. Like, that would mean more if she beat it. And doesn't Maria. she now hold the record? Um, yeah, she I holds believe, the record yes. for most knockout title wins. Yes, and there's a big rumor that she's retired now, apparently. But, um, in terms of knockouts... Well, yeah, because she didn't lose the title, but she lost the title. In terms of knockouts, um, who would you say uh, biggest knockout? What'd you say? Biggest knockout of the year, um, obviously has to you have to say Gail Kim. Um, the one that definitely I don't like know, pitched, though, Maria, definitely like surprised me Maria's coming a weird up one. in the rankings. Jade. Jade, yeah, Jade's a weird one because I wouldn't Jade say Marty came Bell. Out nowhere. You think early TNA uh, this with year the with the knockouts was not that great, but then as the year improved, we really got good knockout stuff. Um, and I'm gonna be bold here: better knockout stuff that improved a lot more women than the divas quote unquote revolution um because remember that remember how weird like because the the knockouts division got really really weird at the beginning of the year because that was part of the whole random influx of random talent where all of a sudden you had like mia yim showing up as jade and you had marty bell showing up you had a yes. bunch of randos yes. like a bunch of people who we didn't know at the at that time they they were they were names that like the casual fan didn't know like uh, we knew but the casual fan was just like huh who's that yes and this was during the infamous um like ring rope botch uh this year i believe where we had like that all women uh show remember and it was a really bad show sadly oh and yeah i remember that, yeah. It. um the yeah. one night only taping yep Yep, and I think that's where they started to cut away from some of those one night only uh, stuff. But honestly, from a character standpoint, there are two that stand out to me. 
Because right. I think what really fixed the women's division, because, I mean, the knockouts have always been above average in the ring. Yeah. Especially compared to some of these other companies. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yes. Not going to particularly single out any company, but, yeah, they've always been above average in the ring. I mean, we've had some great matches. We had Taryn Terrell versus Gail Kim mm -hmm. a couple of years back, which was amazing. Still one of my favorite uh, women's rivalries of all time. But uh, I think what really separated them was the characters. There yes. was a point in the year where the characters kind of started to blossom, and I think the big two that led to that were Allie and Rosemary. Mm, I'm going to disagree with you on that, though. Uh, I mean, that's okay. But I would say definitely uh, Maria and Rosemary from the standpoint that Maria... I think Allie still has a little bit more to go. Don't get me wrong. How her character has molded and developed from someone who was an assistant who could not wrestle, but by God was probably the best wrestler on the, on the entire women's roster. Yes. Yeah. Um, for her to quote unquote learn to wrestle from her boyfriend, uh, or her soon to be boyfriend Baxter Sutter, who's actually her real boyfriend Pepper Parks. Um, Spoiler that's alert. a great. That's a great story. That's a great story, and I think there's more to that. But in terms the, the of a story I that Maria is because Maria came in with an established character. We knew who she was. Uh... We knew what she represented. We know she was a woman of power. And I guess she that helps from Japan, character. though, didn't it? I guess that really does help from Japan. Because you go from the beginning of the year to the end with Mike Bennett and everything. I think, yeah, I think that really does help her out. Um, it it really think, did help her out. I, I think she it helped the people around the her more. Whereas Rosemary was at first, like, you know, she was like... Rosemary is a bold character. character. ...start interacting with the K... And slowly she became the mastermind of the whole thing. We had the Jimmy Havoc storyline, which was pretty fun. I think she was really, like, Maria was the one who, she helped everyone around her evolve, but Rosemary was the bold character leap that they were taking a big chance on because it was such a bizarre thing that could have hit it with the crowd or couldn't have because and those dark Jade characters could have make or break. Jay just came into her own as a compelling babyface. Oh, yes. I just don't like how they're trying to book her as the next uh, Gail Kim because I think already on her own, she's done stuff that's uh, unique on her own. You know, She doesn't she's need over. to take that legacy. She's very over. Yes. I've been uh, bound for glory. She Out of the women, she got one of the bigger pops. I think only Gail Kim outpopped her. Yes. Um, excuse me. Um, let's go take it into tag teams now. Now, um, Mullins, I'm gonna let you shoot for this one first. Actually, who do you think? Tag team of the year? Yes. I mean, it's again. You kind of gotta look at the Hardy brothers. Uh, yes, uh, you could say that one, but I'm... you you gotta look at also. You know, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta look at. You gotta look at my boys, the Decay. Yes, yes, yes. But let's be real for a second. How about? Maha Bali Shira and Grado. Oh. Nobody? Jesus anybody? Okay. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. Yeah, I was thinking more Decay level, although, honestly, I think the yeah. the way that Decay has evolved this year. Um, um The tribunal, I mean, before before they kind of fizzled off, the tribunal had a chance. The tribunal had a chance at the end of the year, all right? They had a chance at the beginning, they went nowhere, then at the end, they were doing crazy good, and now. No, they're gone. They're gone. So, but, uh, see you later. Franklin, what are you? Uh, what are you thinking? Sorry to bring kayfabe uh, there, but yeah, you know, it, it's definitely between uh, the Decay and the Hardys. Uh -huh. I think the Hardys had the more complete arc, whereas the Decay was. We have the storyline, and we're making it big. The Hardys kind of went full circle. You know, they they were feuding for a bit. So I, I guess because Decay was really the first team to reestablish those tag titles, I'll give it to Decay. Yeah, I'm definitely on the the Decay on this one. Um, just from the standpoint that the Hardys, um, it was a transition that was very bold, and they did work very well. And it did it. It's it's both of them that are really good, and I think just it's just just to stay away from 
the normal answer of saying the Hardys, I would say Decay, because I think they, they've had some amazing character development, where, um, honestly, uh, before the Hardys were a team, right, when the Hardys were facing each other, that's when I was more involved in the Decay as a team, you know what I mean? Like, the Hardy mm-hmm. storyline, without a doubt, most likely it's the story of the year, unless you guys want to argue that, but in terms of just these guys as a team, I think the decay from their longevity of uh, the year definitely paid off um, because they've had some great matches, and I think they still got some great more. So, but any uh, I, I I gotta agree with you with the decay and with the story of the year being the Hardys. There's just there's no other story I think in pro wrestling that went that well this year. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Now, I'd arguably say like Tanahashi and Okada, what they actually got to do this year was really good. Mm-hmm. But we haven't really seen the conclusion of that yet, given the results of their G1 match. Mm-hmm. I think Jeff versus Matt is the story of pro wrestling this year. Mm-hmm. It really was, because it, it evolved from a simple fa- brother versus brother feud into something that revolutionized the way you watch wrestling. It, it, who would have thought? It's 2016. The Hardys are 31, 39 and 41, respectively. And, uh-huh. and we're talking about them as the feud of the year, as these rising, as these faces that are changing the game. You never really know when you're going to hit your prime, man. Yeah. Especially in wrestling. God, goodness, there are guys. Brock Lesnar. Well, yeah. Speaking of Brock Lesnar, today, today he basically like today he got news that he's going to be sticking with wrestling for probably another year. So speaking of scandals, he just got UFC. Speaking of scandals, thank you for the segue, Mullins. Uncle Billy's gone. We spent the better, not better half, but better most Rip of Uncle Billy. Better most of the year loving Uncle Billy Corgan. By God, the man it gave us me. gave us Marilyn Manson on TNA. He gave us better graphics, better logos, better everything, better music, um, and he gave us financial success when the company was really burdened, and really saved us for some sh- like some shows. And now, now the fate is uncertain. Now that he's departed. Um, and wants nothing to do with TNA, and it's kind of very sad that oh, he got snubbed. Oh, I didn't hear that. Did you read the last interview? Mm, what was his last one, though? He was hoping, uh, recently, I'd say about a week back, uh, he said that if Anthem could put out Dixie, that he'd be interested in working with them again, and yes. that he's happy that... Well, well there's the also this other rumor that Daddy's home, and by that, Jeff Papa Jared, Jeff. Papa Jeff might be coming back, so we're in a we're ending the year in a great way with total I, I, I don't know, man. Papa Jeff's track record isn't all that good anymore. GFW. Well, I think. I think. Well, that's because he doesn't have the money. He 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 has the wrestling knowledge. He yeah, he has the he's knowledge. He's more of a but knowledge base. Money. Like he, he's not a money base. Like he's a knowledge base though. Yeah, which it says is say, Dix Carter was more about spending the money base. So, no. if you could have either Papa Jeff or Uncle Billy, who do you pick? Um, Uncle Billy. Uncle Billy. Just, Uncle Billy. Just from the standpoint that, if you look at it this way, Uncle Billy was able to produce more stars in a shorter amount of time. Like, if we looked at all the stars from Jeff Jarrett's Asylum days to when they left TNA the time it took to make them into stars was a long time the time that it took Billy Corgan to do that was much less you know what I mean and, and let's not mention the talent influx we got I mean we got Aiden O'Shea back uh, we got Marsh Rocket all these guys were RPW right, let's, not, let's not get too crazy alright when we're talking about Aiden O'Shea and Marsh A. Rocket let's talk about yeah but you know they're, they're, they're relatively X-Division, old X Division champ Trevor Lee <laughs> um you know, let's let's, talk, yeah, let's about, talk about Andrew Everett. Let's talk about people that they they managed to keep around, um, like their international uh, talent and not, people that they're able Luke to. Galloway. 
people that they were able to actually end up using in a rightful manner. Because let's be honest, Al Snow, Greta, and Mahabali Shira, I did not want to deal with that on my TV screen, let alone see them versus the tribunal. But by the end of it, Mahabali Shira and Al Snow was actually a much greater story as those two together than it would have been Grado and Shira versus the Tribunal. Well, yeah. And I don't want to I don't want to just point all the blame on Grado and be like Grado this is, is a joke. This is America. It's not the same reaction as you would get in a Scottish uh New England British area. No, I just say New England. I don't know why it's in New England, but I I don't know why. But England and, you know, UK area uh, reaction so you know you have to look at it that way is that they they built Mahabalashira on a much different scale of a push um, in the end and I think that really helped you know helped, had that helped Billy Corgan's track record near the end of building these stars um, now Aiden O'Shea though Sadly, he's going to be the friend, friendly, loving uh, giant who's going to lose to people, probably. Look at managers <laughs> recently, but sorry about that. that. Got cut off for a sec there. It's all good, but let's see what's next. What's next to talk about here? Signing of the year. I think we had some pretty big signings this year. Signings, yeah, we've had some decent signings, re-signings also. Um, how about that Braxton Sutter? No, 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 no. I, I'd say he's up there in terms of guys. He liked Drake. Um, uh, he liked yeah. Drake wasn't signed this year. No, yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't. He was, um, oh, yeah, that was, he was last year. year. Uh, Mike Bennett. Why does that one come to mind? Was he last year or this year? Mike Bennett was no, this he, year. He, he was at the very beginning year. of this year. Let's see. We got him at the first episode. We got him on January 5th. Yeah, I was about to say, I was like, I'm pretty sure he was actually the first... 2016 to present, January 5th. So when he made his debut. Yep. Uh, honestly, the miracle Mike from Bennett. a character standpoint and what he's doing now, I got it with Aaron Rex. Yes, yes, that's another great one. Um, And that, that debut promo was just... Yeah, um... I think long long term success. I'll go with uh, Mike Bennett, but short term signing success. I'm gonna say Aaron Rex, and I would not even say Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes did not pay off. I'm gonna say that. Cody Rhodes really didn't do anything. Yeah, he really didn't uh, pay off. I don't, think, I don't think he's done. I, I think that was just what um, he could do. He's he's Bullet Club money now, so yeah, he's 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 getting. Uh, a lot. He has he, a dual his, contract. His I believe. wealth, his um. What do you say? Earnings are just going up because he added the Bullet Club Matra to his name. Uh, I believe he has a dual contract though, so he can still appear for TNA. If Brandy Rose that hasn't showed up, actually, I, I'm that confused. actually segues. What if we get some go. Bullet Club action in TNA? We won't. We won't. I no. think I think that's too too. That's too out expensive. There. That's too out there. Also, especially because uh, most of those guys are tied down, and that would involve some major handshake agreements um especially because one of them didn't go down at total non-stop deletion where we were like where's the bucks of the youth um and even though we didn't have the bucks of the youth show up uh we still had a heck of a show especially with like a lot of um no name to put it nicely uh no name people that from a international level you guys wouldn't know about but for like a local area i would know about you know what i mean yeah. so you know, we had a heck of a show for those guys to get squashed straight up because <laughs> that's what they were there to do. Um, and even be in the crowd to like be a part of that uh, crowd and to keep everything, uh, you know, on a very low scale. So, uh, Speaking of the signing, of their, have we agreed on Aaron Rex as a signing or? What do you mean? Um, I mean, he, he has to be the signing. If it's not Bennett, it's either him or Bennett. It has to. Uh, yeah, let's, speaking of effects, let's talk about that face run and what went wrong. Because it was working, and then out of nowhere, it just stopped. Shaved his beard. <laughs> um, I, I, I was there. I was there. The beard was more over. Something wasn't quite the same. I want to say. I, I think it was the fact that the Galloway rivalry was stopped and put him in there with Eddie, 
who was so on the cusp of the main event at that point. Yeah, I think he should not have been placed in a rivalry. Why I cannot speak rivalry with um, Eddie Edwards. However, I'll tell you this though. All right, we had a little guy who was still around at this time, um, and he wasn't under the Death Count Council moniker. Um, and I would have done James Storm versus Aaron Rex, and then I would have had. Uh, Aaron Rex ride off James Storm, you know, injure him, and that because you think Grand, uh, you know, the Grand Impact Championship that would have been a great match in my opinion, James Storm and Aaron Rex, and that would have written off, um, James Storm because Jesse Goddard just was not a very fun, entertaining feud for anybody. His sad as it say. Uh, um, they, they, they they tried somebody new and it didn't work. But I'll say EC three Aaron that Rex. At the very least, Aaron Rex shined as a heel there. Well, yeah, he. It's very easy to shine as a heel, especially for that man. Like he can be a very good heel, but at the same time, he's he can be a very good, good face. Example. Yeah, I feel um, like the baby face run was cut short, though. I, I mean, when he debuted, I had people like I was looking up different reviews and everything. I had people from like different magazines and everything saying, "You don't turn this man heel. Mm-hmm. This guy is over as hell," and it just died because they put him against the wrong guys. I think, he and should, I think I think for a heel though he should be facing guys like EC3 um and not Jesse Goddard's whereas on the same point him and Eli Drake as a tag team they have the charisma I if think If you want a heel to get over off. you got to put him against people that the crowd gets behind the and crowd he's not get being behind booked, Jesse he's not being Goddard's booked as a cowardly heel he's being booked as a smart heel and I like Do you that. think he should get that world title um opportunity like we're kind of in that weird area of TNA where it's like do we need the Grand Impact Championship anymore? Yeah, the, the thing is, is the whole concept for the match is it got stale. It's gotten stale. Yeah, well, I it, think it's Galloway more of a, it's more of a big guy happened, thing. You know what I mean? Like, I think the X Division is a small guy. If would have happened, we would have had a good program to establish the championship. I think Galloway would have won the title, and Rex would have changed it. Would have chased it. And I think the Rex face run would have worked better. I think Galloway getting injured really put a damper on a lot of plans. Mm. And I think we did miss one big signing, though. And I mean big, literally and metaphorically, Moose. Oh, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say he was bigger than Aaron yeah, Rex, he, though. He, he, he has he showed more up, to do. Like, it, 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 was, it, was a shock when he showed up, but like he hasn't really made like an impact other than winning that title. Yeah, he won the title, but it was just like, okay. Yeah, it was very I, sudden, I, but, and it was a good move, but it was too sudden. Um, and then the 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 relapse match was too Aaron Rex likely to win it back to to not like get squashed by you know Lariat, uh, the the game changer, whatever it's called. Um, but I think Moose has much more to do in 2017 than he does in 2016, um, and think, that's a good thing. So I think we need that Lashley versus Moose program for the world title sometime. Um. I don't know. Are those guys good long is, is guys? It too late? Because I feel like that's what they were building with. With after it might he be beat too late. Three. I thought that was what was next. The problem is, I think it's too late. Just from the standpoint that Lashley is not in that, um, because not storyline wise, but timeline wise, uh, we went a long time without Lashley from when he left versus Eddie. To when he just came back with total nonstop deletion, uh, there's a time where he's been gone. So you think, you know, Lashley and Moose for the Grand Impact Championship might be good for the Grand Impact Championship prestige, but at the same time, uh, we also are risking like that. That world title of TNA is devaluing a lot right now because the tag team. Uh, championship is flourishing um and the x division is on a flourish also uh and i think everything in tna is flourishing but the if you look at everything from top to bottom if you take it from the tag team to i i would you know debate maybe the uh maybe x division maybe grand uh impact championship to then the knockouts but the knockouts you know with the rosemary's champion could bring it up about uh you know above the grand impact championship um and to the last the you know world championship 
um, because Eddie is a great champ, but at the same time, I think in terms of guys that he's faced, they've been great guys, but I think program-wise, they just haven't been as um, successful. And I think this last match with EC3, even though it was a okay match, it just wasn't wasn't you know a decent outcome, wasn't a decent uh, fulfilling. I feel like Eddie should have just got should have got the quick. Probably you know, gonna get Dave though. I think that's the big thing. I think, do you think 2017 we're going to spend the better half of a year, uh, Davey and Eddie, or maybe the better, you know, first three months of the year we're going to see Eddie I and think Davey, Davey gets big Eddie. Time. I think Moose gets Lashley. Um, there's a big uh, rumor, though. Isn't Davey still, or no, he's a, like, a got married kid or something on the way? Or something, something. He like does that. have a kid on the way with Angelina. Yeah, so I think that's a big thing of why Davey actually, you know, he might not be... And you know, what about um, shit? I wanna. I'll think back. What's his name? What about Drew Galloway? Where's Drew Galloway fit in now? Cause he That's was problem. getting cheered yeah. as a heel, and now he kind of tur- he kind of turned into a tweener at Bound for Glory, yeah. and now he's back and he's still um, getting cheered. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. With the Helms Dynasty breaking up, um, it's sad to say Andrew Everett might really get hit with this one really badly but i think trevor lee has a good potential to do something in the grand impact championship range I'm not going to say world title range of course but grand impact championship range so, i think because yeah, remember he, he also had a good showing in that one match for the number one contendership yes it was very good and i think this is a time where guys like eli drake should be of that spot to be feuding when with he's allowed to speak. When he, next year in like two weeks or whatever um you know he should be in that area with eddie um you know to to help build the entertainment value of the world title scene because i the, think drake is the most likely to get a run in 2017 yeah most definitely if i had to if i had to pinpoint one guy in particular that's going to get a championship run um you know drake but I'm going to say this also, he's also most likely to probably be one of those guys to never hold the title. Like, I just think he has that, he has that level of success about him where he could never hold the title and be great, but also hold the title and then be like, we always wanted that and it happened. So, uh, do you think, do you think Drake is legitimate competition for EC3 as face of the company? I think they're the perfect foil for one another. Say that again. I think that uh, Eli Drake is legitimate competition. The EC3 is the face of the company. Yes, and I think that's there's been a big rumor that WWE wants to snack, snatch up Eli Drake, um, especially because Eli Drake has a great persona right now, and he has a great gimmick, um, great wrestling ability. By God, for like the man, I've never seen the man wrestle anywhere else or heard of him wrestle anywhere else, but just just crazy it's just crazy to see like this guy could potentially compete with ec3 as but i think that's the same way like mike bennett had that potential um to rival ec3 and now it's you know it's you know that level of ec3 eli drake and uh mike bennett like those three guys at any moment they could be interchangeable for who we're going to uh rotate this main event scene around the Clearly, thing about is everything's all about matt hardy though so the thing about ben is that i don't feel like he's a good enough talker yeah i think most of it really is he he's a decent talker but i feel like most of it is um shrouded within his wife you know and Marie, then the, there's Marie still that like there. ring of honor stigma whereas yeah. EC3 yeah. was somebody they rebuilt from the ground up, and Eli Drake is the guy they're kind of just taking under the wing. Because everybody was talking about this kid, Sean Ricker, who was straight off of the Rock series and touting him as the next Rock. Everybody thought he was going to be the next big thing. He gets picked up by WWE. He gets given a stupid name, Slate Randall. And I believe he was scheduled to go directly into the NXT title picture at one point. But the See, I can't deal. remember any of that. Well, at there all. was th- there was talk of him actually being one of those guys that just got thrown up to the main roster. No, no, no. It was the NXT title picture because there was a battle. There was a lumberjack match. Well, because I read it, I read an interview with him that was talking about like there was there was there was talk of him being at some being like involved in a SummerSlam type of thing a couple years ago. Well, 
I, re- I remember this clearly. Uh, I can't remember who was holding the title, but I do remember there was a big summer. There was a lumberjack match, and one of the lumberjacks attacked the champion. I believe the champion was Neville, and the film, the segment was reworked, and it Tyler, it was Tyler Breeze was who ended up attacking the champion, but originally the segment was filmed to have Slate Randall attack the champion, who at the time that was Eli Drake's name at the time. And nothing ever came of that. Uh, I believe his introduction was given to Solomon Crow, and we all know how that turned out. Yeah. What about Sammy Callahan? Can you see Sammy Callahan in CNA? He's in. Well, Sammy Callahan's in, uh, Lucha, Lucha so, so he like he might be locked down for a couple seasons. Yeah. In terms of um, yeah. in terms of big signings for TNA, uh, this. You know, next year, I don't know. It's well, weird. Well, there's, there's there's talk of actually Eli Drake going back to NXT or WWE NXT, general. WWE. Um, okay, people, let's let's do this. Let's do three people you think uh, NXT is gonna or not NXT TNA is gonna hire. Three people you think WWE is gonna take. Okay. Uh, let's so. take. I mean, takes kind of the easy the, ones, um, in okay, my opinion. Okay. So, let's, let's go. With the, can, can, am I allowed to go with the easy ones? You want you want to do mine first, and then you guys do yours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. So, um, right off the top of my bat, for the three people that uh, WWE is going to take, uh, I'm going to say they're going to take Drew Galloway back. I think um, if Drew Galloway, he learns how to talk. If he does not get injured. All right, that's a big thing. If he does not get injured, they will take him. I think they will take him. Um, second one, I think Eli Drake. Definitely. I think they'll take Eli Drake uh, slash EC3. They'll take one of those two um, for that as my second pick. I think definitely. Mm-hmm. Like They're almost on the chopping block for that one. They won't take Mike Bennett. I don't think they'll take him or Maria. Um, and from number three standpoint... Um, I think they'll take one of the females, and if I had to bet money on uh, one of the females, um, I'm gonna say Allie. I'm gonna say Allie's gonna get like yeah. randomly like snatched up out of out of her yeah. storyline somehow. I think you know randomly her and Sutter are gonna have like a massive breakup, and she just like leaves. In my opinion, I he think he cries or something like yeah. like I can see Sutter turn heel. Yeah, and he's and like um, maybe go with you, uh, go with Laurel Van Ness or whatever her name yeah. is. Yeah, that, so, that could end like that. I think Laurel Van Ness is next to be Knockouts Champion. E, I hopefully not. By God, they should never put. No, she can't rest. She can't rest. <laughs> she can't rest. So she can't talk. Um, yeah, hopefully they don't. Hopefully they don't put the title on her. But um. So that's my three for them to take. Um, three for them to gain. Now. Three for them to gain. This is a little bit higher, a little bit harder, uh, because there's so many people out there in pro wrestling. Um, so it's kind of harder to pick what we're gonna guys to take. Um, I'm gonna say yes on that one. I'm gonna say Ryback was a big one because Ryback, um, if he's not a part of Bullet Club by now, he's TNA. He's not. Uh, second one, uh, Adam Rose. Um, if they, yeah. if, I'm gonna say Adam Rose is a good one, and um, third one, I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna like bundle these guys together. I don't know why, but I think after Total Nonstop Deletion, I think, I think one of those teams that we saw is gonna get snatched up, and I think it will be the Ducklings. I think it will be the Ugly Ducklings from the standpoint that TNA loves their tag teams right now. And they Ugly love Duckling. the stables, and I think yeah, this will be a you know, good tag team slash stable to just lose. <laughs> but in the end, when they win, it's gonna be good. So I think I think you know, that will be I fun. think the Ugly Ducklings will eventually because Colby was supposed to get the New Japan signing, but with yes. him getting busted, yes, with him getting busted, I doubt it. Yeah, especially with that and Evan, you know, Evan Bourne Matt. So he may have to settle. Um, what, what about Seidel? No, I don't think they'll get. Psyched. I think I think they'll yeah. stay away from that for a little while. Yeah, I th- still think that's a little high up there. Here, here are my three. I think Ryback. <laughs> I definite. see what you did there. I think Ryback's a definite. Mm-hmm. I think, I think they're gonna go for an Asian woman. Other than Jade, I think they're gonna get their their big ass kicker Asuka type 
Ooh. And it's either going to be Yoshirai or Kairi Hojo because those are the two that are in in negotiations with big American companies. And I think we're going to get some high flyer because Puerto Rico's indie scene is pretty big right now. I think we're going to get some high flyer for Puerto Rico. And if it's not Mr. 450, it's probably Chicano. Mm -hmm. Okay, any, so uh, any debates on that? Uh, is it my turn now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. As as it pertains to guys that they are going to that WWE is going to snatch from them. Uh, like I said, I could see Galloway. Galloway's got a lot better on the mic. He he was he wasn't that great on the mic when he was in the WWE. That was his big thing is yep. that he could wrestle, but he couldn't talk. And WWE and WWE is all about entertainers. You have to be able to talk, or they're not going to push you. Because there's not enough managers running around that can help peep everyone out. I mean, we can always make Darren Young great again, again. <laughs> so we got Drew Galloway. <laughs> um, another name that I'm gonna see out there. I, I, I like the I like the Eli Drake name. And I'm telling you, the the last the last thing I'm gonna bundle this last thing up into, what is now seven. And I'm going to tell you right now, WWE banks on money. They bank on things that bring money, bring publicity, bring excitement. They're going to bring House Hardy to the WWE. Yes. I think so that's a big one to worry Hardy. about. I don't know. TNA, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It depends how, it how depends good of a on deal. What the want. It depends, depends on, on like what... how they feel, how good of a deal, because, and how much they can yeah. impact their company. Because mm. it's they they don't need the money. Mm, clearly. <laughs> so, so at the at the at the end of this, they don't need the money. WWE can offer them anything they want. It depends on what they want to do with the rest of their career. Because uh -huh. they even don't they don't even need the security. Because at the end of the day, they have Omega. They don't even need that security of hey, we can just be trainers at the end of our career. No, they don't even need that. It just depends on what the WWE offers and what they're thinking at that exact moment when that moment goes down. I think they like being their own bosses now, though. And then as it pertains to guys they want to grab up, uh, you guys were all saying the Ducklings. I'm actually going to go with another tag team, and Tech knows what tag team I'm talking about. The Bravado Brothers. I was thinking that, too. <laughs> yeah, I think that might have been a good one. Because it's a very gimmicky thing, and I that that's one thing TNA likes with their tag teams is gimmicks. If you think about it, Decay has a gimmick. Uh, the the what's their names? The Tribunal had a gimmick. Everybody mm -hmm. has a gimmick as it pertains to teams, and this Bravado Brothers gimmick it just clicked well, especially with this whole total nonstop del deletion thing. It clicked very well. I really liked it. I want to see that on the. I want to see that on the thing. Um, I like the signing of a female. That, but that's a very. That's one that's kind of murky as it pertains to who who gets the sign. Who is it? I think it has to be Kyrie Hojo or Yoshi Rai. They're the two. I'm big thinking names. that down the line, WWE nips a couple things out of, out here and there, and I'm thinking that eventually. Alicia Fox gets cut. Um, and Alicia Fox heads. Because they need an African-American woman. I think they need an African-American. They have Marty Bell. Marty Bell's barely African-American. and She's barely a wrestler. You know who I think would actually get nixed awkwardly enough? Eva Marie. I don't know why. I feel like she'll get or Emelina. One of those two will get nixed, and they'll get picked up by TNA. TNA, TNA will nab will nab them immediately. Oh yes, yeah. I, I could see I could see Emma failing her gimmick for the third. Well, her second gimmick didn't really fail, but I could see Emma like Emelina not working out and them cutting Emma. Yeah, them saying okay, well we tried. She she got fired that one time for like a week because she arrested. She she got fired for like more. half a day. For like robbing Walmart or something. Or... <laughs> Look, she needed that little iPad cover or whatever. <laughs> yeah. 
I'll bill her. I, I can see I'll Emma getting fixed up by CNA. Okay. And she's not a writer anymore, so she's not really like that attached to WWE. And then I'm actually gonna go with a name that could also go to WWE, but I don't know if WWE would pull that trigger just yet on him. I'm gonna say Leo Rush. That would be a big one. And I think I think he could be the centerpiece of the X division. Because yeah, he could be because it, it, it adds to something that needs maybe needs maybe something like fresh to it. Because Marche Rocket did not take off as well as they thought. And I don't even see him as an X division guy. I don't even know why he was I think it's, I think, it's, I think it's too early for him in terms of like especially because now that they might be splitting up Helms Dynasty, so yeah, and he was kind of like with them. So I think I think he'll do good. Uh, green championship wise, though. Yeah, like he he's yeah he looks like a guy that was, harders his that power delivery there. is pretty good. Yeah, like, but so they need someone like Leo Rush to add to that X division. But that's mm-hmm. my names for that. I always thought Tremperetta would be good there, but then he went with New Japan. Yeah. He he was there for a bit as Greg Marshallulo or whatever the. And then he was Ace Better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised he hasn't showed up in any of the Hardy stuff. I'm surprised. You know who I'm surprised hasn't showed up yet? Especially, like, when he was getting mainstream publicity? Masters. Yeah. That is true. I am... Because when, when, especially... Well, that the whole thing was, was he was tied in with that GFW thing for a while. I think I think if Papa Jeff... If Papa Jeff start, comes back and starts working with TNA... I think there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of names that are gonna be coming uh, we can, back. We can get uh, Magnus world. back. Magnus and will probably be back. I know. I know you want Magnus back. Oh, I love Magnus. <laughs> no, I not with Mickey James might be on WWE. So that that's a that's a name who WWE might now, but that isn't with TNA. Yeah. What about so. what about Stu Bennett? What about Wade Barrett? I don't I think know because he's be not better, wrestling be anywhere, better. so yeah, is he? Thing is, he he he's be better off in the UK. Year, uh, I he'd think be he'll be, he'll go back to WWE though. It's no, one of those not, things where like he'll probably go back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true though. I mean, it just depends what how nice of an offer. What culture pro wrestling? What in the world? So, all right. Well, that's been a uh, 2016 year in review of. TNA. So, leave us your thoughts and comments down below. What did you like from 2016? Yeah, what'd you like? What'd you hate? Who'd you, who, who's, what awards would you give out? How are we going to rate the year? Uh, what would you give I will label it as uh, 9, uh, maybe 8.75 uh, broken universes out of uh, 10 numbers. What member of House Hardy would you vote as president? It's obviously the scribe. I don't know. I think Vanguard won. I think he has the best marketing campaign. The scribe is just the man. He knows how to write things down. He's got the Amazon drone army. I give give this this TNA year an 8.5 dilapidated boats out of 10. I'm going to give TNA this year I came in and TNA when I came in to, when, when I came into 2016 I would have probably given TNA a 4 in January just because TNA just was one of those it just it didn't excite me at all mm-hmm. and then as the year went on it went up and up and up and I'm going to have to give it 9 green beans out of 10 Oh, oh, I love oh, green beans. Oh. Anyways, <laughs> we'll see you all next time. Adios.